today for this uh, Croatian Sangha, but we know that we say we call them Croatian Sangha, that Sangha, that Sangha, but actually everybody joins on every Sangha whenever you can. So this one is called Croatian Sangha because we who are talking are usually Croatians. <laughs> we are taking responsibility. Yeah. This. So last time, last week, we were reading Vilapa Kusumanjali verse 31. So we will continue uh, with the next verse, 32. <clears throat> when can I humbly and joyfully decorate your arms that are like very lovely lotus stems that are expert in destroying the patients in the swan-like intelligence of Murajai or Krishna with armlets studded with various jewels or render any other service to you? Hmm. Nice. So I will repeat the verse. When can I humbly and joyfully decorate your arms? that are like very lovely lotus stems that are expert in destroying the patients in the swan-like intelligence of Murajai or Krishna with armlets studded with various jewels or render any other service to you. So he's nicely asking, when can I humbly and joyfully decorate your arms? or render any other service to you. And we, we can see just in this verse that Radhika's arms are destroying the patience of Krishna. And she is moving hands in front of him and armlets and everything makes beautiful sounds like in the last last week we were talking also about the sounds of uh, ankle, ankle bells yeah ankle bells how they make Krishna mad, you know. So, when Krishna sees her hands, he don't have patience. And in one of the sharings, we were also 
talking how also we, you know, should forget patience because we want Radhika now. We don't want to wait. Of course, we understand that Radhika will show herself in her own time. But when we get to know Radhika more and more, we lose our patience. If, if Krishna loses his patience, how we will not lose patience? So, we will continue. Maybe you want to say something? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, <coughs> uh, yesterday we had a very nice program uh, on the appearance day of Radha Mohan. And one of the parts of the program was the Lila with the dancing. And how this dance starts. Krishna first appears. And then he's dancing, playing the flute, making different postures of the body, of his eyes, of his head. Because he wanted to get to attract all persons who will be in audience. So this is the way of Krishna, how he is doing. He wants always to attract the others. And his, and his movements and uh, playing the flute, dancing, and everything what he is doing actually is a little bit with little endeavor because he wants with this performance to attract everyone but in one moment radhika appears and when radhika appears krishna became a little bit shy he he went a little back did you notice? Yeah. And what happened next? When Radhika started to dance, she made such a small little movements, not big steps, big movements of the hands, just very simple, very minimalistic, we would say in Western words, movements with the legs, with the feet, with the eyes, with the hands. And through this, she catch completely Krishna's attention and attention of everyone. So Krishna immediately left his desire to attract the others when he saw Radhika how she is dancing and then again she accompan accompanied her and they started to dance together but it was very interesting that actually radhika took all his attention in one particular second small particular second and not with the big words, big sounds, big movements, big dancing steps, but just oops. And he was acting like a marionette, like a doll on her hands. She moved just one finger and he changed his mood and feelings. She just looked at him from the corner of the eyes and he was just stunned. So, we can hear from the words also how Radhika's hands are so expertly moving that they are capturing all Krishna's heart. 
but not only Krishna's heart, heart of all hearts of all living beings. So that Radhika, Tulsi Manjari or Raghunath Goswami, wants to serve humbly and joyfully. Humbly and joyfully. Service has to be done in humble mood, but with full joy, happiness. To give a joy and to give happiness to beloved Shimati Radhika or Ishtadev. So this kind of humbleness and joyfulness is completely natural for devotee. Because through humbleness, he is expressing his love. Through joyfulness, he is also expressing his love. So this is the very close relationship with Shimate Radharani and her maid servant. Very sweet, full of tenderness and so on and so on. Thus, the loving maid servant serves Sri Radharani. The service that are dear to the heart are externally manifest in these prayers. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is Sriman Mahaprabhu's mercy incarnation, descending along, along with the Lord to give the world the perfect example of bhajan. Hmm. He and the other Goswamis are Rajas eternally perfect Manjaris who have descended to earth as Mahaprabhu's beloved associates to teach the world the ways of Vajan. <coughs> Sorry. Yes. <coughs> We can remember the history of Raghunath Das Goswami and other Goswamis. And from all six Goswamis, Raghunath was the only one who was living with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu up to his end. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami and other Goswamis, they left from Vrindavan. But Raghunath was staying with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu up to his last moment. And why this is important? Not just because of history. Because in that way he relished all different moods of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially this mood of Vipralamba separation because he relished it directly he saw Mahaprabhu in all this beautiful situation when he expressed his Radha Bhava and also Manjari Bhava why this is important also because when he came back in Vrindavan uh, not came back when went in Vrindavan and stay in Radha Kunda all this Vipralamba rasa, which he received from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, appear to the fullest in his heart. And in that way, 
he can be prayojan guru to show the way of bhajan for attaining madhurya parakya bhava rasa hmm. through the feelings of separation because he is so chaitanya mahaprabhu in this vipralamba rasa and he was infused with this vipralamba rasa in his heart so he is like a prayojana acharya is showing the way how to meditate how to practice bhajan in the mood of separation and because of that because of his uh, strong impressions emotional impressions he wrote this beautiful book vilapa kusumanjana because this is the book which is glorifying exactly the mood of manjaris and this is the separation viraha or vipralamba hmm. bouquet of lamentation is tra translation vilapa kusumanjali bouquet of diff age words is one of flower and he is this is a prayer but this is the flower of his words which are coming from his heart <laughs> and what he is doing he collect all these 108 or 104 sorry 104 verses like flowers and offering to radhika please accept these prayers and one more thing he is doing he is watering with his anjali with his tears that all these flowers always be fresh you know you have to put the water but the best water is the tears of love mm -hmm. and he's watering his prayers like a flower which he is offering to radhika with his own anjali or tears and this is the way of bhajan mm -hmm. yeah uh, Thank you, Puranga Sundara. So, so nice. And this is, you know, a few days ago, uh, we had Gaur Purnim. And as I'm reading this, I'm thinking how blessed we are. You know, that Goranga Mahaprabhu came, but in, in the mood of Radhika. And we know that he's actually like double Radhika and one Krishna, meaning Radhika inside and Krishna and Radhika outside. But Radhika never comes alone because her manjaris are always with her. And we are blessed that through those manjaris, we are really receiving the way to get to Radhika or to attract Radhika. Yeah. Because it's not just that we are uh, going towards Radhika. It's when we are moving towards Radhika, Radhika moves towards us. It's not one way. We move one step, she moves ten steps. And as Goranga Sundara was uh, explaining, that all these verses are full of emotions, and we can understand that the bhajan needs to be like that. We need to feel, <clears throat> feel emotions, and when those emotions become strong, then tears <coughs> come to our eyes. We cry, and 
those tears attract Radhika even more. <laughs> Shriman Mahaprabhu gave them that responsibility. And there is no other shelter than their lotus feet. One must meditate on how Tulasi renders her devotional service. They are extraordinary maid servants who never descend from their maid servant seats. Lalita and Vishaka sometimes act as Krishna's naikas or heroines or amorous partners. But the Kinkaris do not accept that position. Even in their dreams, although in form and qualities, they are qualified to be Yuteshwaris or Gopi group leaders in all respects. Each line on this Manjari's, Manjari's toes defeats the bright splendor of the lightning. <laughs> they are cleverness personified. <laughs> and although they are qualified to be Yuteshwaris or Gopi group leaders, they have no taste for this at all. They are always immersed in the nectar ocean of Sri Radhika's service. So just shortly, when I read this cleverness personified, I remember so many stories, and we'll not now go through the stories, but you read also many stories how Manjaris are clever in dealing with Krishna and with Radhika, because we know they can be stubborn sometimes. So Manjaris are clever, cleverly talking with them, so that they will <laughs> okay we are we are back yeah. so we can see that manjaris are important element for relishing the love between radha and krishna they are creating the moods, or at least they are preparing situations, locations, and even through cleverness, they prepare them for different lilas. You know? So, just this I wanted to say in connection with this. Yeah. <clears throat>
So we can see from the commentary of Anathadas Babaji that he made clear differences between Sakis, Gopis, and Manjaris. And he said actually that Manjaris are completely qualified to take the position of Sakis, but they don't want it. Because they don't want to enjoy with Krishna independently. They always want to be like a shadow of Shimati Radhika and always want to be pro Radhika. Narayan Mahar said pro Radhika, always on her side. So, th this is very important to understand these differences between Sakis because, for the conditioned soul who is trying to enter in this Madhurya, Rasa is much more easier to see himself like a Saki than like a Manjari. It is amazing actually. Because through this bodily consciousness of life, it's very easy to say, I want to be beloved of the Krishna. But Manjari Bhava is completely opposite. And because of that, it's very difficult. Because Manjari Bhava requires completely heart without pure heart without any whiff of personal desires <laughs> and it said they can be Yuteshwaris leaders of the groups but they are not taking that position because Yuteshwaris can act sometimes like a Naikas like a beloved gopis girlfriends who want to enjoy with Krishna. But Manjar is never even in a dream, I think Baba is saying here, never even in a dream wants to be alone with Krishna. He wants to speak to enjoy with him. But for attaining this Manjari Bhav, we need special Kripa. Not Krishna's Kripa. We need the Kripa of those who are already situated in that position, like Manjaris. Only they can give us the mercy that the heart can be changed. And Baba in the beginning of the commentary is saying Sadaka should follow the way how Tulasi Manjari were serving Radhika in his bhajan. He should follow the way, because Tulasi is an expert in service. But it's not only the point of expertise in service. <coughs> the point is in expertise of feelings, proper feelings. Everyone has a feelings, especially in Vraja. <laughs> Very intense feeling, but we need the feelings of Manjaris. We should learn how to feel like a manjari, how to feel like a manjari, how to think like a manjari, and how to serve like a manjari. And Baba is giving perfect example to practice bhajan, to always be absorbed in mood, in activity, in feelings of Tulsi manjari. And Tulsi Manjari, in the words, in the beginning, say, I want to serve you, my dear Radhe, with humble and joyful mood. So, I want to serve your hands so that you can destroy the patient of this Muraji. So, this is a very great secret, actually. In Manjari Bhav, because it's not, in one sense, it's not so natural for the conditioned soul. Conditioned soul can imagine, I, can, I want to be friend, I can be friend with Krishna, no problem. I want to be mother, father, in this parental mood. Yes, we can imagine, because we have experience of that. 
even we can imagine I want to be a girlfriend of the Krishna because we have experience of that. But we are lacking one experience to make a right arrangement for a couple who wants to be together and to be happy because they are happy. You know? And we want to belong completely to the uh, to the women's side of this couple. So Manjari Baba is not so easy in one sense. If we are approaching even with a little whiff of bodily consciousness. So this is the reason why Swarup of Manjari Swarup is so necessary, but not only to receive, but to identify completely with this. It's not enough to receive. Like Gurudev a few days ago says, just for the practice, I gave you a chance. But as more you are practice and identify yourself, then slowly you will come in the mood of Manjaris. And those who are Rasik devotees, very sensitive Bhavuka devotees, they can see from the eyes of devotee, from the movements, from the words of devotee, from the cloth, from, uh, from all his appearance, is he absorbed and how much is he absorbed in this Manjari identity? And in one sense, uh, uh, sorry, in another sense, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who opened the door of this Manjari Baba, it is easy. Because he gave the mercy. Otherwise, it will be not possible at all. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed it. When he received the initiation of Ishwara Puri, he changed completely the mood. Before that, he was very sweet. But when he received the initiation of and Diksha from Ishvara Puri, he initiated him in Gopal Mantra to meditate in this mood of Manjari. And he became more sweeter because of that. So, Baba and Gurudev is many times is repeating and sometimes we are thinking, at least I'm thinking, why he is repeating so much? You know, why he is repeating so much? And as more I am thinking about it, then I am understanding why he is repeating. Because this kind of selfless love, it's not possible to find anywhere. This kind of selfless love is meant for extremely confidential service, amorous pastimes, in the amorous room. You can be servant in the garden, in the yard. You can be servant even in the house. But to be servant in the sleeping room, in a sleeping bed, requires special <laughs> feelings, special expertise. And only Manjaris can teach us this expertise. Raghunath, we, this morning we were read, Raghunath is praying to Lalita and Vishaka <coughs> to teach her different services. A special prayer he is offering to Rupa Manjari to teach him the expertise in serving in Nivriti Nikunja, the sleeping bed, sleeping room. And for this kind of service, no one can teach new Manjari, but only eternal Manjaris like Rupa, Ragunata, or Tulsi Manjari, and so on, up to Guru Manjari. So clear understanding, first understanding, what is Saki Bhav and what is Manjari Bhav, and putting in the Lila, how Sakis are acting in the Lila, like the Sakis, and how Manjaris are acting in the Lila. 
and then we can understand it. But then we have always to go deep in ourselves to check where is my position, which kind of desires appear. What if Krishna suddenly appears in front of me and he said, come, come, I want to show you one, some beautiful flowers. No? And this is the test for Manjaris. And Gurudev is very often is saying this. So to be fixed in Stai Bhava requires time, requires a lot of mercy, and requires a lot of eagerness to attain this. So Baba is again here, is mentioning in his commentary these differences. And he said, Sakis are the flowers. Manjari is this wean of devotion. Wine, 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 sorry. Wine of devotion. Full of flowers. And these flowers are Sakis, actually. But there is also something more. Buds. Buds, in themselves, they have all qualities of the flower. But they are meant to enhance the beauty of the flower and the wine. Not that bumblebee separately enjoy with the buds. And Krishna, when he's trying to enjoy with the buds, he knows actually they don't like me so much like they like Swamini. But he's doing it like a joke, like a fun. You know. And when the bumblebee, Krishna, fly to Gopi to Gopi, the vine is very happy. Very happy. Because Radhika is happy when her girlfriends are happy. Yeah. Yeah. And he is going from flower to flower and enjoying each sake but not the buds. And when he starts to enjoy all wine, then the buds are trembling. And this kind of trembling is so beautiful, so sweet, that all wine becomes so attractive and sweet. So this is metaphors, this is a pictures like they say, you know, but Everything, all emotions are present there. Dada, many things can be said about this. If someone wants to share, of course. If someone wants to share yeah, uh, in a Zoom, it's a little bit far away from here. We cannot see everyone or hear in the, our cave under the lotus feet of Radha Mohan, if someone wants to share, to add, please be Radha free. Radha? Yes, Danny DG. Hmm. I recognize your voice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to un underline uh, maybe something what you already said, and uh, uh, be before we, uh, about feelings and uh, identification. Uh, when we said before, uh, Baba saying also that uh, uh, Raghunath Das uh, came here uh, to to live for us something. So uh, um, these here feelings are actually. I I can uh, I can feel that uh, actually the the must uh, must m must nectarian what uh, what uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived to us is actually they. Uh, their description of their feelings so that without that actually is not possible to enter to manjari bhav and that, that this is actually must uh, when he said that uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu is must incarnation must merciful incarnation actually this is the the point the drop of the big biggest nectar of his appearance for us so uh, can you can you please is, just slower talk that they can okay. translate? Yeah, yeah sorry. The sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
then it is fired up. <laughs> because always uh, Goranga Sundar always make me fired up inside, so I must something to say. And uh, um, Goranga Sundar said also that uh, he was in the near association with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, even from the uh, even uh, in mo mostly uh, uh, in the end of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lila. Um, and he is also example of uh, of big austerity. And sometimes when we are looking uh, outside, uh, for maybe for most of us, also before, it was the same of one of the saintly person. But actually, if we don't go inside of their feelings, we cannot recognize. We cannot recognize Prabhupada, we cannot recognize Raghunath Das or Goswamis. So somehow I, I feel just to underline this point that what they give us is possibility to um, feel their feelings, to put their feelings in our heart and to identify, identify with them. Otherwise we cannot enter in the manjari mood there is no way like Ranga Sundara said it's more easy to be the friend uh, or um, girlfriend of Krishna but this is so we don't have another way actually there are only way without them we are lost and uh, Gurudev and other acharya they only they want to give us their feeling also and also their feeling was they share from them and, and learn from there so this is just small small things nothing new but what he what goranga sundra already said but somehow i feel that very strongly thank you then and this is why it's so important to focus on only one book, Vilapa Kusumanjali. Because if we are still going around and searching in another books, Manjari Bhav or Simalbra, we will all be finished in Sanchari Bhav. Because even Rupa Goswami was writing from the point of Sanchari Bhav. This is his role. This is his task, duty which he received from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But only Raghunath, specifically in Vilapa Kusumanjali, is giving the clear guidance how to attain Manjari Bhava. And when the person attains Thai Bhava because of the mercy of Raghunath and his feelings and words, then he will he can properly understand <coughs> Rupa Goswami or Rupa Manjari. Many of us doesn't accept this because this is normal. One book, it's so boring, you know. I cannot read anymore. I know every letter in this book. But it's not the point of knowing the sentences, verses, or the letters. The point is that we open the heart for the Kripa. And Raghunath put Kripa in these words, not in other words. He wrote so many beautiful books, even mentioning Manjari Bhav, but mixed with Sanchari, with Saki Bhav and other things. Many times, I personally am not aware actually that this is the channel for it's open and uh, it's not hidden anymore channel for attaining Manjari Bhav why it's channel because the Kripa mercy is going through this kind of words if you see Rupa Goswami's last book the more of the Utkalika the most of the book is in Krishna. But if someone is not fixed in his Taiba Manjariba, he cannot understand or half understand which is the words are actually. 
I, I understand half, 50%, but actually 50% is just going under and I cannot catch it. This is the worst thing that then the person will say, I, sorry, I don't understand anything about this. <laughs> yeah. So he's speaking last words, last book, like a crying of the swan, but still in Sancheri <laughs> And this can open only someone who is completely fixed in Manjari Bhava and he can show, be careful. It's not the problem, Rupa. It's not that everything is so beautiful. But the mercy for attaining Manjari Bhava for sadakas is in Vilapa Kusumanjari. Gopal is reading. I can say just something. Our beloved Gopal is reading every morning and 6.30 we have sharings, very nice, sweet, confidential sharings. And four days we are on the verse of 13. Verse 14. 14, sorry. Even in the same paragraph. And it's amazing how so many things are coming from the same words. Suniti and me are completely amazed. What? I never thought about that. It's never came to me. Because mercy is working. Not because I know what I don't know. I, don't, I, I barely know English or my English is broken. But the mercy is coming. And we are happy because we feel the Raghunath and Guru Manjari is giving us mercy through that verse. So, Vilapa Kusumanjali, but also Radha Rasha Shudanidhi, but Vilapa Kusumanjali again and again and again. So we can say that Raghunath Das uh, Goswami, her feelings are uh, manifest complete manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Complete manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> like a manjari mood, in a manjari mood. <laughs> Without his experience, direct experience with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he cannot fulfill Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to become Prayojan Guru. Prayojan Guru, someone who has to bring devotee in the hands of Guru Manjari, and Guru Manjari has to bring in the hands of Rupa Manjari. This is what Narottam Das Thakur is saying. By the mercy of Lokanath Goswami, my Guru Manjari, he took me for the hand and brought me in front of, not Radhika, Rupa Manjari. And Rupa Manjari, is asking Manjulali or Lokanath Goswami, Manjulali, who is this Nava Manjari? And for during that time, this Nava Manjari, new Manjari, is standing little behind of her Guru Manjari. This is Bhajan for Manjari. Manjari Bhav, little behind with lower eyes and head, shyly is standing and listening, this introducing. And then Rupa Manjari is saying, okay, I see her humbleness, her sweetness, please bring your jeweled plate with paraphernalia for serving Radha Mohan. 
So what is this jeweled plate? Please give your jeweled heart with all paraphernalia of your emotions and offer completely to Radha Mohan. So this is the bhajan. According Rupa Nuga Ragu or Rupa Ragunata Pade. This is the way, channel, whatever you want to call it. And Gurudev is saying two days ago it was really, really wonderful thing. It's happened in two minutes. <laughs> he said actually we should accept it. If we cannot accept it, we cannot follow properly. It means that false ego is still so strong. He is blocking this acceptance. But if devotee accepts voluntary open heart and follow the meditation of Tulsi Manjari or Ragunat, it means that he will accept it and then he can enter deep in absorption of meditation. Without accepting with full heart, not with mind, intelligence, yes, 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 I accept it. Meditation, deep meditation is very difficult. But if person, a sadaka, accepts with full heart. Yes, everything. What I understand and what I don't understand. I accept and I will follow. Then meditation becomes very smoothly like a flow. And this is the way of bhajan for Madhurya Paraki above. <laughs> you agree? <laughs> you are translating. <laughs> I'm translating and I have, I have my own feelings. Yes? <laughs> yeah, it's very good. If you want to say? Mm -hmm. oh, no, he, he don't want to say. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I would just add that uh, because sometimes this can sound that we lose our identity in these situations and that uh, we must copy something, you know. But the following, the steps, doesn't mean copying. We are still individuals. Each manjari has her own nature, her own spice. Like in this world, yeah, we are similar in human form, but each of us is different in so many ways. So, my view is that they are showing us the way to meditate. Because when we are reading in Vilapa Kusumanjali verses and uh, explanations from Anantadas Babaji, uh, it can give us tool, I will say, to visualize those lilas to visualize how Manjari acts. But of course, through time, we have our own personal relationship with Radhika. So, our bhajans, meditations, will have elements which are not maybe mentioned in the book because they can naturally open 
we understand that Radhika is never the same. We we read last time, I think, that Radhika's love is infinite and there is no room for expansion but, but in the same time it expands all the time. And we could understand that through the words uh, of Vilapa Kusumanjali, uh, Kusumanjali, Radharasa Sudanidi, and similar, we can get the guidance how to enter into these meditations. And especially helps that when we read the verses, that we do not just read them mechanically, but try to enter, enter into the feeling, because that's the most important, the feeling. We need to feel. To, for example, we can see that Raghunath Das Goswami, when he's in meditation, and he's happy serving or doing something for Radhika, helping her in her union with Krishna. But then this meditation stops. <coughs> Vision disappears. And of course, because because he had a vision, he is lamenting after that. Because we can see lamentations are usually based or are coming after a vision. When he is in meditation, he is not lamenting because he is there. Lamentations come when there is separation. Because when it's union, there is no lamentation. Usually, shouldn't be. We know that Radhika sometimes can sit in Krishna's lap and feel like, where is my Krishna? You know, lament. But it's her special mood. You know. But usually we can see when the manjaris are there, like Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, they are serving, they are doing their seva. seva. But when the vision stops, then the lamentation starts. Because that taste is so much higher and the emotions are so much higher than the emotions that they feel in sadak body. So it's natural that this lamentation comes. And as our relationship with Radhika grows, and as we get more into our bhajan, more connected with Radhika, lamentation will come naturally. Uh, my point is that there is nothing artificial in this, and shouldn't be artificial. Because artificial can be dangerous. So our relationship with Radhika grows naturally. And do you know why? Because of Kripa. Bhakti Kripa. Because Bhakti 
is giving us emotions, and bhakti are the emotions. And through bhakti and through kripa of the acharyas, and in this case Raghunandas Goswami, our love starts to grow towards Radhika. And as I mentioned in, in the beginning, that we make one step towards Radhika, Radhika makes ten steps towards us. It's like that. And even sometimes when we do not make steps, she still makes the steps. Why? Because she wants us. She wants us. And those steps are made, not always directly, but indirectly, through Gurudev, through Vilapko Sumanjali, and similar. So it's, it's a natural process. Yeah, we understand, as Goranga Sundara said, that the type of relationship, it's not maybe common in this world, that other relationships are more easier to understand. But that's why we can see from the examples of Raghunandas Goswami and other manjaris. So, we can maybe continue, huh? reading? Can I just add something, what you said? Yes, now, please. In a day it, uh, my also feeling is that it's very, very natural, because in the same way, like uh, the mother, mother gives the body of uh, her child, but after that, uh, the, the child must to learn and he learned all about this material world through the feelings of the mother, of the parents. Uh, in the same way, uh, the Vilap um, Kusumanjali or Das Goswami, he opened uh, the window of this spiritual world. If we don't look, if we don't look his emotion, we cannot grow up. We are now just baby manjari and we don't know anything. But we can learn everything actually like the little baby uh, she she can learn even four or five language from one of two three years if if uh, parents will speak other language so just just by looking just by observing absorb absorbing himself in what's going around so in this way it's completely natural and uh, it's wonderful to understand that. So thank you so much. Yeah, yeah this this you are right. Uh, because that's why uh, it is said that we need to dive in into every words, every word to catch the feelings and the mood that's present there and in that way we can learn and understand the mood <coughs> because if you read just mechanically we will miss it yeah okay thank you yeah so we'll continue in dreams wakefulness or deep sleep the light of Sri Radha's shimmering toenails shines in the Kinkari's hearts Srila Dasa Goswami says I offer my obeisances unto your friendship. I only desire your devotional service. So, they are 
manjari in name, manjari in nature, and manjari in form. As Goranga Sundara says, manjari means bad. And the manjaris are similarly girls of very tender youth, <coughs> both in form and in nature. Just because it said here, very tender youth in form and in nature, it's interesting that in some stories, we can see manjaris in nature are who very heavy <laughs> towards Krishna. When Krishna tries to do something to Radhika. So they are tender, but sometimes sharp. <laughs> Buds never allow the bumblebee or Krishna to enjoy them. Although they do increase the bee's thirst for the blooming flowers that they accompany. This is their supreme purity. Supreme purity. <coughs> it means they are even above the Sakibab. Everyone knows for Sakibab. But we can see here that above that is a Manjari Bhav. It's not the question of comparison who is better, who is uh, lower. It's not the issue of that. The point is that Manjaris are allowed in the place where gopis are not allowed to come. They are helping Radhika and Mohan in their most confidential, amorous pastimes. And Sakis, they don't have any approach to this. In that sense, they are most superior. In another sense, they are most superior because they perfectly know Radhika's emotions, Radhika's desires to, to give the pleasure to Mohan, but through Radhika and her emotions and her heart, they know Krishna's desire also. So they are perfect maidservants for both of them, Yugala Kishore. And they are embodiment of their amorous pastimes also, because they are embodiment of most intimate seva. Automatically, they are embodiment of their own amorous pastimes. And Radha and Mohan, because of that, are not at all shy in front of them. They don't have any hesitation to embrace each other, to kiss each other, to make different amorous pastimes with each other. It, they simply don't care because these small girls, small buds are looking them through the hole of Kunja or they are coming when they are very tired in the bed. They don't care for them. Actually, they need them. So this third part in Radha Mohan's love is so necessary. Third part, usually when there is some loving couple, they really don't need the third person between them. Third person always makes some troubles. And when the loving couple is, they always want to go 
to, to run away from everyone, the, to be alone. And, and then they can, they can freely exchange their loving thoughts, loving talks, loving embraces, kisses, and so on and so on. But we hear that the supreme position of Manjari is that they are necessary for Yuga Lakishore loving pastimes. Necessary. They are completely dependent on Manjaris. And this is supreme position of Manjari. That's why all our Rupanuga, Acharyas are glorifying Manjaris so much. But we can see here that this kind of position is very rarely attained. It's not that everyone wants to attain that position. Even if he thinks or even if he speaks about Manjari Bhav. That's the, why we should follow the feelings of Tulsi Manjari, thoughts of Tulsi Manjari, and service of Tulsi Manjari. And our Guru Manjari, of course. Because their feelings will penetrate in our heart and change the heart, which is attracted naturally. Heart has natural attraction for different bowels. But only through the heart of pure Manjari, the heart of conditioned soul can change and melt in the mood of Manjari Bhav. So if we accept this, then Manjari Bhava will be very, very much infused in our heart, and this is Kripa. Without acceptance, we are not able to receive Kripa. Kripa is here, but it requires acceptance. And if someone is eager, really genuinely eager, not from his mind, intellect, but genuine in the heart, he will voluntarily, with open heart, accept guidance. Otherwise, we will be always our own gurus. Otherwise, we will be always our own gurus. That I learned from Gurudev. <laughs> Without acceptance, sorry, like he says, sorry to say, <laughs> it will come, but it takes a time. But with acceptance, it means that we calm down our false seek. <laughs> And we open the heart, which can be filled with this specific, unique, supreme bath with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. But everyone is a person like he is. So that's the Acharyas are very bold and very direct, giving direct directions because if they don't give direct directions, who will give? I, myself, me, Guru, to myself? No. It doesn't work. Shri Rupa Manjari is the bud or Manjari of Shri Radha's form or Rupa. And Shri Rati is the bud of Shri Radha's love or Rati. Rati, what does it mean, Rati? Obsessiveness, craziness, mad, intoxication, 
ecstasy. This is rati. And Raghunath is embodiment of this intoxication, embodiment of this ecstasy of service. <coughs> he is completely obsessed with Shimati Radhika. No? And this obsessiveness gives him such beautiful words which he is offering like a prayers from his heart to Shimati Radhika. Without his obsessiveness, I'm mad out of you, my dear Swamini. These words cannot be so sweet. Obsessiveness with only Radhika gives him a power or sweetness. I, like, I don't like this word power. Sweetness, which he is applying in his words. This is his embodiment of this Rati, which is necessary to approach Shimati Radhika. How we can approach Radhika without Rati? Without obsessiveness, addiction. It will always be Sanchari Bhav, never Stai Bhav. Obsessiveness gives a focus. I'm obsessive. <laughs> Others maybe think that I'm crazy. And I agree with them. Just leave me alone. You know. But the feelings, Bhava, is obsessiveness. We call it ecstasy. What does it mean, ecstasy? To be completely obsessive in one goal. In one goal, and in this case is Rati Manjari, embodiment of Rati towards Radhika. Rupa Manjari is embodiment of Radhika's Rupa. What does it mean? She is same. In everything, she is same with Radhika. Only difference is the age. And because of this equalness in all emotions, she is the leader of all our. She represents Radhika's body in the form of butt. Everything is inside, but not so much visible outside. And this is Manjari Bhav. To be really embodiment of Seva, of Manjari Bhava, means that you always want to hide in your hide heart all these feelings. Otherwise, a person can very easily become a flower. And then he is exposed to bubble bee. <coughs> but if he keeps all emotions deep in the heart, the emotions will grow and grow and grow but always be hidden in the form of but. And intensity of that emotion, Radhika and Krishna especially appreciate. And this is the role of Guru Manjari, how to make new Manjari, Nava Manjari, this kind of but. But we have to accept it and to remove little our independent nature. We should open someone to someone who can mold us according to Radhika's desire. That's the point of following, to allow it to be molded like a clay. You cannot mold the clay if he is in a thick condition. Clay has to be softened. Then we can model the clay. Why clay is softened? 
Because accepted water, accepted the water, because she knows, Clay knows, water will help me to melt, and my beloved master, my beloved mistress, in that way can very easily model me. <laughs> it's very easy and very smoothly. Acceptance. We have in meditation this marana, dharana, dhyana, so we are talking about, but we are always jump over this dharana, acceptance. Acceptance is necessary in, on all levels that we can go deeper in proper meditation. Different kinds of meditation. But in the proper meditation, what is the proper meditation? Which gives a pleasure to Radhika. This is the proper meditation. Not if I am deeply absorbed. No. Meditation, if this meditation absorption gives a pleasure to Radhika. This is meditation. This is devotion. Otherwise, my personal ambition to attain peace or to attain nice company <coughs> in my meditation and so on. No, does it give pleasure to Radhika? And I have to check with my Guru Manjari. So we can see how it's so personal. Yes. And in that way, devotee is never alone. And he never lack the help of others. But if he accepts that help, and then he become a butt. Charged with manjari bath, <coughs> like this practice pot. How you call it, steam pot? You know this pot when you cook something, pressure cooker. Yeah, pressure cooker. You know. <laughs> we have to be pressure cooker <coughs> because Radhika is pressure cooker. <laughs> Embodiment of pressure cooker. <laughs> All her emotions are deeply present in the pot of Radhika's heart. All her body is that pressure cooker. All her body. And only her body can intox intoxicate this guy. This Lampato, this womanizer, only such strong pressure cooker can do it. And then can we imagine what does it mean to be made servant of that pressure cooker in a bad form? She can express her feelings, but this small pressure cooker has to keep all these feelings still in himself. This is why Manjari Bhava is so rare. <laughs> but it's so sweet. And we are so lucky that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all his associates gave us this chance to feel this condensed, thick emotions of Radhika by following their examples. <laughs> Tulasi serves Swamini with Prasanga Seva making her relish her own sweetness while putting her armlets on. Tulasi says, Do you know what your arms are like? <laughs> <laughs> 
Swami says, no, tell me. Tulasi says, he who understands, it has made me understand. Shyama is a good follower of yours. His swan-like mind was enchanted by the sweetness of your golden lotus stem-like arms and it destroyed his patience. Swans are naturally fond of eating sweet lotus stems by the shores of the ponds. So Tulasi continues. Sometimes, when you are proud and angry with him, Krishna will beg you for a festival of embraces. But you will wave your arms and say, no, no. <laughs> You think I did not understand that? Even the patience of the victor of the Mura demon patience, patience of the victor that who won over the Mura demon even the patience, patience Strpienie, I don't know how they say in R Russian. Hmm? Patient. Not patient. Patient. Not patient, but patience. To be patient. Wait. Uh, Wait. Yeah. Wait. Mm -hmm. Even the patience of the victor of the Mura demon will be destroyed by the beauty of your arms. And he will anxiously pray. My heart is breaking. Give me some happiness. Krishna, this Krishna praying. Yeah. So, in this way, Tulasi maddens Swamini. By reminding her of her lover with her prasanga service. How this is interesting. Radhika makes Krishna mad. But Manjari is capable capable of maddening. Radhika, mm -hmm. by reminding her, reminding her of her own sweetness mm -hmm. and the uh, Leelas with her beloved. Mm -hmm. Wow! Mm -hmm. <coughs> How wonderfully the truth hums <coughs> through this Rasika verse. <laughs> the hums, yeah, those bumblebees are here. Hum. Yeah. Yeah. So, how wonderfully the truth hums through this Rasika verse. Resonate. Resonate, yeah. Vibrate. Mm. The beauty of your arms destroys the patience of Murajai Krishna's swan-like intelligence. Mm. 
This is sarcastic words of my yeah. friend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is sarcastic. He who this is sarcastic words of Manjaris, you know. He who killed Mura, demon Mura. Your beautiful hands destroy her special. You kill him. Read it again, please. Read it again. Yes, please. Sarcastic. So the beauty of your arms destroys the patience of Murajai Krishna's swan-like intelligence. Swan-like intelligence. Yeah. Why you... swan-like? Yeah. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Why swan-like? We, we read that swans like to eat the stems, a lot of stems, you know. So that's why they're comparing him like a swan. His intelligence that is swan like. When he sees Radhika's hands that are like wines of lotus stems, so he goes crazy. So, yesterday, during the dance, again we are coming on the beginning. Yeah. Krishna was dancing and making so much movements to attract the others. But when Radhika appears, she just makes one little movement of one finger and he was stunned. She didn't have to do so much movements, dancing steps, eye, uh, eye glances, flute playing. Just with simple movements of her hands, fingers, eyes, eyebrows, she completely took all attention of Krishna, but also of all others. If you notice, in the beginning everyone was very attracted to Krishna, and Krishna won. <laughs> Krishna won this because he wanted to attract and the audience was immediately attracted to him. Just the few Manjaris were not attracted. But when Radhika appears, he became attracted and he left all the others because he was attracted for her. And Manjaris immediately understood now my Jai Shri is coming <coughs> and she cannot she can like the Dariji says she can madden him like anything and Manjaris are aware that also they helped Radhika to be also mad out of him. So this is the exchange of madness. <laughs> Sorry. Because it's complete intoxication, ocean of intoxication. It becomes the madhouse. <laughs> I mean, because we, we know that Manjaris feel thousandfold what Radhika feels. So if she becomes mad, <laughs> how Manjaris feel? So everybody becomes mad in their own <laughs> way. <laughs> so the word Mati in the text means that intelligence which determines the truth. Only the beautiful arms of Srimati can destroy the great intelligence of that great hero who destroyed the demon Mura. That shows how great Srimati's love for him is. For it is her love that makes her so beautiful. Mm. 
And who is best to describe her love than Krishna? So Krishna says, I am the abode of transcendental flavors. I am the fully ecstatic, full trans transcendental truth. But Radhika's love is making me mad. I don't know how much power there is in Radhika's love, that it always overwhelms, overwhelms, overwhelms me. Radhika's love is the guru and I am the dancing disciple. She always makes me dance various dances. Mm. So, Krishna considers himself a disciple of her love. When he sees her love, he sees my God, oh my God, okay, maybe he doesn't say my God, <laughs> but <laughs> he says, wow, <coughs> her love is so great, even I don't know how to love that much, and in that way, because when I see her love, when I see her, I become mad, crazy. I'm not in control. I'm the supreme controller, but I'm not in control anymore. I'm dancing as she plays. <laughs> She is controlling me completely. I want to learn from her. So I am becoming her disciple in love. And we know that a few days ago, when we were reading about appearance of Goranga, that this was one of the reasons why he appeared. He wanted to see, to experience this, to feel what Radhika feels, that love. And also the love of Manjaris that they feel for Radhika. So this is amazing. Krishna, who is the Supreme Being, Supreme Lord, is the disciple of someone else, and that is Radhika, the love, Radhika, who is the love personified. So even God is the servant of love. So who is God? Who is really God? The servant or the master? Yeah? In this case, both. <laughs> so this is the beauty. And we can, like, in this way, we can go deep into every verse, especially in these lilas that are happening between Radha and Krishna, between Manjaris and Radhika and Krishna. And when we go deep, we can just be in, wow, how beautiful, how beautiful are those relationships. <laughs> How much love is there 
but love that is so playful, so playful and flowing. And if we go deep, our hearts will melt and melt. More and more, our hearts will melt, especially because we will see how much everybody is loved. Manjari is hang up. Uh, Manjaris are loved by them, and they are loved by Manjaris. And it's so beautiful relationship, full of love. Yeah. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, actually sisters, <laughs> as Manjaris, always go deep in the Vilapa Kusumanjali. Go deep. Don't rush. No need to read in one day everything. We came to half of this verse, half of the explanation by, by Ananta Das Babaji. But, but we can go deep by feeling it, by entering into our bhajan and seeing it, seeing it uh, happen and feel the emotions. Feel the emotions. And who knows? One day you'll just find yourself inside. Oh, I'm here. And then Adika come, says, Come, come. Please help me with this. And you are there. You're seeing it directly and feeling the full emotions of a manjali. Mm -hmm. uh, you say? Oh, please. <coughs> yeah, please. Radha, Radha. Radha. I, um, I have just three points. I I feel like my uh, the cells of my body are on fire. Thank you so much for your sharing or explanations. I uh, have two points. One question is in regards to what Gora Sundra said uh, about uh, when you stand in front of in front of Radharani and. The devotion is about pleasing her and not necessarily attending to that love. <coughs> I was wondering if you could please explain how can I know that I am with my love or with my meditation pleasing her. It's very seductive to f just get lost in the stream of love and find peace and ecstasy and and complete union so how can i know that i'm pleasing her versus um that i'm attending with my egoic hunger the second question is um i cannot imagine any soul to be anything else than a manjari I can, I mean, if I'm feeling this and, and it's resonating, I, I'm just imagining that that every soul in the essence, there is this love or this yearning. It's the ultimate ecstasy, it's the ultimate love. The, how to say, the most intense zero point. I cannot find any words. So then we talk about Gopi Manjari and we talk about Saki Manjari. And I'm just wondering, is this a matter of choice? What Manjari, like what Bhav we attend to? Or is this um, a matter of soul evolution? 
राधे राधे understand we always have an ego even in our bhajan we have the ego but the ego is i am manjari of radhika with her name qualities body manjari body yeah so there is an ego but a spiritual ego and the emotions are felt and in connection with radhika if we feel the emotions this is often our sign that radhika is happy as we are more deep in connection with our ishta dev our beloved radha and krishna our beloved that's also point our with who we have relationship we start to feel we start to feel if they are happy or not i can say and mahabhava because we share often uh, what we feel and like that and sometime we get a feeling something bothers us and then we think oh this is coming from our mind or something but in some time we understand oh my god they don't like it they don't want it and after we get the confirmations through guru dev through for example we start to read some verse vilapa kusumanjali or, or radha rasa sudanidi and we get the same answer so we need to also trust our start to trust our emotions so that also our emotions can be our guidance in our relationship with radhika unless radhika will come and say yes this is i'm happy with you she can do that she can to gurudev yeah sometime and sometime through other means but we need to be open also goranga sundara was mentioning this to be accepting that if we hear something and that radhika tells us so oh, i want it like this way so we need to be open so i don't know if you want to add to this but uh, the point no, is i just want to say that actually uh, the most recommended the most recommended thing is uh, that how we, how we all know that radhika is pleased with my activities with my seva if he is my guru is pleased if my guru is pleased this is most for the most devotees i like this because all instructions which are radhika is giving she is giving through guru manjari and guru manjari is supervising how i am doing this am i doing at all this and with which feeling i am doing in which mood we are saying so this closeness with the guru is the key point to know if the radhika is really pleased or not and this closeness with guru 
starts with Shraddha, Nishta, and now we come to the beautiful point of Rati, Guru Rati, obsessiveness with the Guru Manjari. Complete. Huh? Complete intoxication. I only see my Guru Manjari. And where is not my Guru Manjari, I'm not going. Even if Radhika is there, I'm not going where there is my Guru Manjari. This is Guru Rati. And this kind of Guru Rati brings to Uttama Gati, to the utmost goal. This is the key. He is not a goal, but he has the key for the goal. And we need faith, then firm faith, and then complete madness of love with the Guru Manjari. Then starts another dimension, <laughs> shortly to say. So through the Guru we can understand if, and we are learning to please Radhika, not by our own. Should, we should try. And different devotees are on different levels, of course. Different devotees are different. They are unique persons, like the Elohim said. A, we are unique persons, and every one of us has his own specific way, nature, and so on and so on. But the key point is Guru Shraddha, Guru Nishta, firm faith, and ultimately Guru Rati. Then Ishtarati starts to appear and blossom in the heart of devotee. So do you hear? Am I here, my Guru? When I'm Croatia, what he is talking to me? Am I feel him? When I'm in Croatia and he is here? Am I here actually when I am in Croatia? <laughs> So this is the Guru, <coughs> Shraddha, Nishta, and Rati. The Rati is present in the heart devotee. He is never separate from his Guru Manjari. And Guru Manjari knows that. Exactly knows that. Reading the heart and the mind. But we need realizations for that. Sometimes Guru Dev said, Do you hear me? <laughs> But he didn't tell me anything, you know. <laughs> Do you hear me? Then I said, yes, I hear you. Because I love you. And this is the reason why I can hear you. So, when we want to please Radhika, Radhika is saying one very nice thing. First, become mine. And to become mine, I sent you your Guru Manjari. When you accept your Guru Manjari like yours, then you are actually accepting me, that I am yours, and you are mine. So this is very, very, very subtle things that tender. And this is why Guru is always glorifying and the importance of Guruism. Hmm. Uh, what was the second question? I'm sorry. <coughs> In regards to the different bulbs. Uh -huh, nature. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it also are tangerines? No, no. So why not? Because uh, the point is that we are all unique and uh, each jiva has its own nature. And even if we think sometime that we decide, but my realization is that we are always guided. We are guided toward, towards our nature, which the nature which is best for us. Yeah. So, you know, somebody can try to be Manjari, but if his nature is different, 
he will not be able to dive in. He will not be able to connect with Manjari nature. For example, somebody is in parental mood. He will feel best in that mood. And he will be most able to connect in that mood. And for him, that mood is the best. So there is no forcing with Radhika. Love doesn't force. Love guides. And if they are by nature inclined towards Manjari, Radhika takes them and guides them to a Gur Gurudev who will show them the way, who will help them move in that direction. But one thing, just sometime, uh, we are talking about Guru, Guru Manjari. Uh, we need to understand that Guru Manjari can act also in many ways, not just directly. Because Guru Manjari, Manjari, they are not limited by physical locations. So Guru Manjari can act through our heart, through other people, other devotees. It can act. And sometimes openness to hear doesn't mean just when we come here to Vrindavan and directly sit with Gurudev in his room. Because Radhika and Guru Manjari, they act always. And they are not limited by the technology, by the physical laws of this world. No. Yeah. So no. I just want to say just shortly, actually it's a quite subject and it can approach from two different ways. Mm. Free choice or is it some legacy? Or is it some heritage which I'm bringing? Different angles can be approached and explained this uh, question. How I, sh I choose the position of Saki or Manjari or whatever Bob. Actually, it starts from the beginning less. <laughs> but the main point is Sangha. Yeah in which Sangha we are, we are receiving this specific kind of samskaras or impression. If we are in the Sangha, for example, with someone who is in parental mood, like the Aluji said, so spontaneously their feelings are influences our feelings. Spontaneously. And if we are in the Sangha, by some good fortune, by Kripa, <coughs> with those who are in the mood of Manjaris, their feelings, their bhava, is in infused in our hearts. And it's carving some skaras, these impressions. And from these impressions, desires appear. Desires are not appear out of nothing from emptiness. Desires are, are peers because of the influence of the association. So this is a very serious question actually, and serious subject. Because if we are born in one country, for example, culture of that country gives us impressions and make all our consciousness. Religion of that country, specific nature of the people are giving impressions to us. This is why Vrindavan is so helpful. Because the mood in Vrindavan is always in the pure love. So 
I remember Bhaktivinoda Thakur helped me so much when he wrote in one book, I forgot in which one, uh, when he said, it's not the problem association. Of course, you come in the store and say, hello, good morning, how are you, my dear? The, the merchant is answering, oh, how are your kids? But this is not association. This is just cultural exchange from someone who is very polite and nice. Association comes in the moment when we open the heart to someone. Because in that moment we are receiving his heart, his emotions in our heart. Now I'm speaking, but the words are not important, believe me. My bhava is penetrating in your heart. That's the point, not my words. So you have to be very careful that when you are associated with me. <laughs> when we are coming to the Guru, you know, his bhava is influencing our heart. Yes, words, of course. And this is the reason why it says, be careful to whom you associate, because you will become like that. So, if we have a fortune to associate with those who are in Manjari Bhava, situated in Stai Bhava, then their original, pure Bhava is penetrating in our heart. And if we are enough, open to accept it, then it's going like an arrow. Uh, just, uh, I'd like to... It's kind of a little bit confusing this for, for me because uh, this is on. Okay. Well, um, because you know, you mentioned uh, who we do we associate with, we become like them. And uh, this means like if I'm with people of a certain mood, then I become like them. That's true, it's true, but if it's not your nature and natural pre, uh, how I say, predisposition or, or that's not who you really are, of course you will be under their influence and you will feel uh, like them, but you won't feel as you. You will feel like an alien in that association if it's not, if it's not your natural place to be. And you will want to get rid of that as soon as, as soon as possible if it's not your natural place to be. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with that because uh, you've got to be with your own flock your own <laughs> tribe, right? Where you feel as you, you feel at home, and if you're not, that's not your place. And it's nothing wrong with that, because there is always in certain circles their own sangha, their own uh, nature is glorified as the best. Yeah, that's why it and, is. And if somebody, if, sorry, if somebody is in a different by nature, in different mood, that's there's nothing wrong with that. They just need to find their own tribe. That's why it said we need to be in the association of like-minded devotees. That, that's the point. That's the point. And when we are, how <coughs> Mahabhava said. Sorry, but how do you know whether you are in the like-minded or not? You will know by f you feeling as you and feeling. Uh, growing and expanding and happy and and uh, in the right place not like an alien you know like for example somebody is in the some other mood like i don't know parental mood or different mood or whatever and they will feel like okay nice beautiful but something's feeling off i don't feel like home here i feel like an alien you know and Why do I feel like alien? because because i received who knows when 
association of similar like-minded people and now suddenly I came in this association and I don't know, I, I feel like alien because this desire in me is samskara which someone who knows when carved in our heart and we are hankering, I'm not satisfied, I'm hankering for another association. This is desire. This is desire. No, this is the question of desire, which is coming in the seed form, aparabdha. Then it comes in the form of para, prarabdha, when it's manifested. But when it's in the form of a seed, aparabdha, it's not visible to us, but we feel. Then it's not my place. Who you are, who are you? If you're like a sponge or like a clay, piece, lump of clay that can be molded this way or that way, who, he, who, what is you? Now, if anyone can mold it as they uh, desire. This ma material for molding got to have some nature, an original nature. Right? <laughs> or it's just a neutral thing, like like the Atman, right? Is the neutral thing. And then it can be molded, molded in different shapes according to what this Atman desires, right? I, I believe that. Uh, Lots of us have our own also personal experience, and as I mentioned, my experience is that somehow I feel guided by Radhika to come here today. I went through many different, even religions, and many different uh, <coughs> trials of different moods towards Krishna, towards Radhika. But, but the point is that all this had to happen that I came here because when I heard first time about Radha Dasyam in 2005, I immediately knew, I felt from inside, this is what I was searching for. You know? But also, sometimes Radhika takes us through different things just to understand, just to feel. Like, we cannot know what is spring if we do not feel the winter. So, for those who are inclined to Manjari Bhav, Radha Dasyam, for them, other relationships are like winter. And when they feel Radha Dasyam, they will feel, wow, this is what I was waiting for. So sometimes Radhika takes us through thinking, to feeling different feelings. And then when we come to the right place, we'll say, wow, this is the group. This is the association I was waiting for. The association where I can grow this feeling where I can grow my relationship with Radhika. And this was my feeling, I'm just sharing my. Everybody have their own experience, of course. <laughs> but I think we can see it in this way, that we are guided, and we don't know, as Goranga Sundara mentioned, from when that seed came. We can maybe presume that it's always there, eternally uh -huh. or somebody in some moment <laughs> put the seed and seed when comes to the good conditions starts to grow and we can feel it then our feeling starts wow something is happening i'm growing um, yes, th there is seed but there is also fertile soil you know you can draw put the seed in some bad soil and nothing will grow and and you i mean not the association but the the, the soil the the where it is planted and the seed is put in a good soil fertile soil then it blooms it grows that means 
that person where the pl seed was planted is accepting and, and likes that seed. Yes. Yes. This is our Sangha, we, and we choose our Sangha. We choose our Sangha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the point. Again. This is Sangha. This is Sangha, and we, we choose, choose the Sangha. We can, position. we can choose to leave the, the, the Sangha that we feel alien, or we feel different, or, or not the same. Yes, I just wanted to make that point. <laughs> <laughs> Why we are choosing? Because Krishna gave us independence and free will. And at the more we are... That. Not at least, it's very clearly written. He gave us independence and free will according to his nature and his um, position. And he is see, looking what we really want, how we want to use. So, I think this is a time for, to, take, to break. Just, just, just one sentence. <laughs> to stop. Just one sentence. Uh, no, you, you continue. Yeah free, <laughs> yeah, free will usually looks like this. I'm thinking, what I will choose, left or right? And then you see big finger showing, choose this. You know? And that means guidance by Radhika. <laughs> you know, she's pushing you in a way, gently, sometimes gently, sometimes a little harder, but pushing you in a way that is best for you in the end. Best for you in the end. Because life happens for you, not to you. So just remember that. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry.